On December 16, 2023, Philippine President Marcos Jr. said in an interview with the Japanese media that China has ignored traditional diplomatic efforts and that the Philippines needs a paradigm shift in dealing with the issue of the South China Sea because Manila's diplomatic efforts with Beijing were going in the wrong direction. A paradigm shift is to break an existing assumption or law forcing a fundamental change in the perceived underlying theory of an issue. For the CCP, the Philippines has gone from being a gentle friend to a troublesome neighbor, and the Philippines' new strategy will cause unprecedented problems for the Xi Jinping regime. I shall never tire of repeating the declaration that I made from the first day that I took office. I will not allow any attempt by any foreign power to take even one square inch of our sovereign territory. The challenges that we face may be formidable, but equally formidable is our resolve. We will not yield. Just as we fought to build our rules-based international order, so are we now fighting to protect it. The protection of the South China Sea as a vital, a critical global artery is crucial to the preservation of regional peace and, I dare say, of global peace. We have an abiding interest in keeping our seas free and open and in ensuring unimpeded passage and freedom of navigation. Let's start with this scene. On March 23, 2024, Chinese Marine Police attacked a Philippine vessel with water cannons in the disputed waters of the South China Sea. At 8.38 a.m. that day, the Philippine supply vessel came under direct water cannon fire from two Chinese Coast Guard CCG vessels in the vicinity of the Second Thomas Shoal, known in China as the Zhenai Reef. At around 8.52 a.m., the supply vessel was severely damaged as a result of the sustained water cannon attack by the CCG vessels. The video shows the two CCG vessels attacking the supply vessel from both sides, pounding it with high-pressure water jets from different angles. Throughout the process, the domineering and aggressive posture of the Chinese Coast Guard was shocking. The supply vessel was in extreme danger, with the possibility of capsizing several times. The armed forces of the Philippines posted the video on social media platform X, and also accused the Chinese Marine Police of dangerous behavior by crossing the bow of the supply vessel prior to the use of water cannons. China subsequently installed floating barriers in the area to prevent any further entry of vessels. One of the Philippine Coast Guard vessels was obstructed and surrounded by the Chinese Coast Guard vessels and two so-called maritime militia vessels, which prevented it from communicating with the supply vessel. The Chinese maritime militia vessels are in fact a disguise of the Chinese military. Why was there so much conflict centered around the Philippine supply ships? The Philippines deliberately grounded a World War II ship on the shoal in 1999 to assert its sovereignty claim. Since then, Philippine vessels have been regularly supplying the personnel stationed on the ship. Although Second Thomas Reef is within the UN-approved Philippine Exclusive Economic Zone, EEZ, the CCP has claimed sovereignty over the area and deployed a large number of ships to patrol there, obstructing Philippine resupply missions. This is the latest in a series of maritime clashes between China and the Philippines. Earlier in March, four Filipinos were injured when two Chinese Marine Police vessels used high-pressure water cannons on a vessel chartered by the Philippine military for a supply mission. The Chinese Coast Guard carried out a dangerous intercepting maneuver that led to a collision between the Chinese and Philippine vessels, resulting in minor structural damage to the Philippine vessel. As seen in the video, the Chinese vessel deliberately approached the Philippine vessel and the two vessels collided. Prior to the collision, the Philippine crew attempted to utilize floats to minimize the damage to the vessel, and the Chinese crew stood idly by throughout the entire process, holding a video camera to record the event. In addition, according to the Philippine media and Reuters, the Philippine military said that on March 4th, it spotted 42 vessels, including a Chinese frigate, a Chinese Coast Guard vessel, and 40 militia boats, slowly wandering around the disputed island of Pagasa Island, which is under the Philippine control in the South China Sea.
The Philippine Coast Guard issued a statement saying that the continued unauthorized presence of the Chinese vessel was clearly inconsistent with the right of innocent passage and a blatant violation of the territorial integrity of the Philippines. Pagasa Island is the largest and most strategically important base in the South China Sea controlled by the Philippines. The world has seen more and more videos released by the Philippine military and government. This is a new move by President Marcos Jr., a high-profile outreach program. Apparently, the president feels that his predecessor's policy of silence didn't work, so now he's determined to publicize China's threat to the Philippines, hoping to make Beijing pay a price. The strategy is working. Uh, I am very concerned and Australia is concerned about any unsafe and destabilizing behavior uh, in the South China Sea. Uh, it uh, is dangerous and it creates risks of miscalculation, uh, which can then lead to escalation. Uh, so we would call upon a number of nations emphasized in their statements. Uh, the foundation document is UNCLOS, the UN Convention of the Law of the Sea. Uh, that is something that uh, should be the guide for all nations' participation. Under the law of the sea, countries have the right to freely exploit resources within their exclusive economic zones, or EEZs, which extend within 360 kilometers of their coastlines. If this regulation is followed, the South China Sea will be divided between the Philippines, China, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Brunei, leaving an area in the middle known as the high seas, where anyone can sail. The Chinese government has never intended to abide by the rules. They claim to use a 9-dash line or 10-dash line to define their exclusive economic zone, which they say includes some islands and reefs that usually belong to other countries. What's more, Beijing has sometimes tried to assert absolute control over these areas, even going so far as to deprive neighboring countries of rights to their exclusive economic zones. This has been particularly denounced by the Philippines and Vietnam, which even banned the movie Barbie for defending Chinese territorial claims. So why does the CCP insist on this issue? It's because the resources of the South China Sea are highly desirable, and who owns which piece of water matters. The waters of the South China Sea account for nearly one-third of the world's annual maritime traffic. And not only is it a central border crossing point, but it's also rich in resources, with large reserves of hydrocarbons and rich deposits of oil and natural gas. There are also abundant fishery resources. But the South China Sea's geostrategic and military interests are more important to Beijing than its natural resources. The CCP wants to turn the South China Sea into a strategic vacuum. This would allow PLA nuclear submarines to navigate the South China Sea without the risk of being detected by the U.S. military or its allies. The new series of Chinese submarines have a range of 10,000 kilometers, which is enough to reach Hawaii or Alaska without leaving the South China Sea, but not enough to reach the American continent. For the time being, a Chinese submarine leaving the sea and entering the Pacific Ocean could be detected by the U.S. or other countries by air and or sound. That's why the U.S. is so concerned about these waters. For Washington, maintaining its presence in Southeast Asia also means ensuring surveillance of Beijing's military maneuvers. It would be very dangerous if China and its submarines were able to leave the South China Sea. With its growing naval capabilities, China has become a powerful potential enemy that the U.S. must be extremely wary of. For a long time, the Philippines has been a passive country, giving the CCP an opportunity to capitalize on its weaknesses. When the South China Sea arbitration in 2016 concluded that China had overstepped its bounds by encroaching on the Philippines' exclusive economic zone, Manila didn't specifically seek to enforce the ruling. Relations between the two countries were good back then, including during the time of the former Philippine president. He took a soft stance on the maritime dispute between China and the Philippines. In 2019, for example, the Philippines protested to China over a sinking ship, but at the same time it refused international support, a stance that was in line with Beijing. 
In 2021, on the fifth anniversary of the award rendered by the International Court of Justice in The Hague, the Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman said that the South China Sea arbitration case violated the principle of state consent, was a perverse decision, and was in violation of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea and International Law. The so-called award was a piece of waste paper, and China does not accept or take part in the arbitration case and does not accept or recognize the award. Since Marcos Jr. came to power in June 2022, he has abandoned his predecessor's non-confrontational approach. In addition to launching a transparency campaign to publicize CCP harassment, President Marcos Jr. revived the 2014 Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement EDCA. This is a bold move that signals he is slowly embracing the U.S. Strategic Cooperation Program, gradually retreating from his previous role of neutrality during the region's great power rivalries. In 2022, the U.S. Department of State issued a recitation of limits in the seas, citing the South China Sea arbitration case as a statement of support for Philippine sovereignty in the waters. Marcos Jr. has also pushed to modernize the Philippine military, with the Manila government recently approving an investment of $35 billion over the next decade to upgrade its defense capabilities against the threat from China. According to the Nakai Asia report, the air defense radar system, manufactured by Japan's Mitsubishi Electric, became operational on December 20, 2023. The radar system is about 300 kilometers away from Scarborough Shoal and sees intrusions into Philippine airspace at a distance of 555 kilometers. In addition, the 2024 national budget allocates funds for the Philippines to construct a permanent building on 2nd Thomas Reef. By now, the attitude of the Filipino people towards the CCP has also changed dramatically. According to the Southeast Asia 2023 report recently released by the ICS Yusuf Ishak Institute in Singapore, 78.8% of Filipino respondents would choose the U.S. if they had to pick a side between the U.S. and China, which is the highest among Southeast Asian countries. At the beginning of 2024, the Philippines has made a lot of diplomatic moves on the South China Sea issue. On the one hand, Marcos Jr. has tried to negotiate further with Beijing. From January 3rd to 5th, 2024, Marcos Jr. paid a state visit to China and met with CCP leader Xi Jinping. On the other hand, new strategies are being actively pursued. This includes efforts to build alliances, especially close cooperation with the members of the Quadrilateral Security Dialogue Quad, the US, India, Australia and Japan. All of these countries have made new commitments to support the Philippines. Earlier in February 2023, during a visit by the U.S. Secretary of Defense to the Philippines, Marcos Jr. announced four new military bases for U.S. troops. Meanwhile, the Philippines has strengthened ties with the defense ministries of Japan and Australia. On February 27, 2023, Reuters quoted the Philippine ambassador to the U.S. as saying the Philippines was in talks with the U.S. about a possible joint South China Sea patrol that could include Australia and Japan. If the plan is implemented, the report said it would be the first time the Philippines has joined the multilateral maritime patrol in the South China Sea, although such a move would likely anger Beijing. In March 2024, the Philippine government took a further step. On March 8, the Philippine Defense Secretary directed the military to implement a new strategy to defend Philippine territorial and economic interests. The comprehensive archipelagic defense concept, which was introduced in January 2024, is part of a coordinated government effort to enhance the Southeast Asian nation's military capabilities and allow Filipino nationals and companies as well as government-authorized personnel to explore natural resources within the Philippine Exclusive Economic Zone, EEZ, without hindrance. In a statement released on March 9th, the Office of Communications of the President of the Philippines said the strategy is an integrated government tactic adopted by the Marcos Jr. administration to resolve the maritime dispute with China. It's a step in the right direction and demonstrates that the government takes seriously the external security challenges facing the Philippines, especially the recent tensions in the West Philippine Sea. The Filipinos even expect to go further. The Batanas Islands, the country's remote northernmost island, are less than 200 kilometers from Taiwan. With U.S. help, the Philippines expects to build a new civilian port in Bataan province. Once completed, this port will play a very important strategic role in the event of a future war in the Taiwan Strait, 
and may even have a significant impact on Beijing's plans to use force against Taiwan. If the U.S. military sets up a military base here, it would have a significant deterrent effect on PLA attacks from southern Taiwan and would stifle Chinese submarines from entering the South China Sea and threatening neighboring countries and U.S. forces stationed there. The Bashi Channel between the Batanas Islands and Taiwan is considered a choke point for ship traffic between the Western Pacific and the disputed South China Sea and would be a key waterway if China were to invade Taiwan. Taiwan's defense ministry said on March 20th that the Chinese military regularly sends ships and aircraft through the channel. Uh, 而不是去讓人家認為說我們又是在製造困難。那這是一個非常非常重要的一個思考的這個方式。The U.S. and the Philippines have a mutual defense treaty. If one side is attacked by a third party, the other side is obligated to send troops to help fight the aggressor. However, on March 22nd, the governor of the Batanas Islands stated that the U.S. military wouldn't be involved in the construction of a port on the island. The governor told Reuters, At first, they said they would help, but then they didn't, so I asked the Philippine Ports Authority, PPA, to help. Obviously, Washington is worried that U.S. involvement in the port will anger the CCP and intensify the conflict between the parties. However, the general direction of support for the Philippines remains unchanged, as Secretary of State Antony Blinken said during a visit to Manila on March 19th that Washington's support for the Philippines is unwavering and remains an absolute priority for President Biden. But um, mostly, and I think um, Foreign Secretary said it so well, um, our relationship between the Philippines and the United States is in hyperdrive. I think that was the, the word that you used, and that's so true. Uh, we see it uh, across every domain. Uh, it's something that um, we attach great, great importance to. And uh, now we have your upcoming visit to Washington to uh, uh, see President Biden, also to have a trilateral meeting with uh, uh, the President and Prime Minister Kashida. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that. Uh, new horizon of cooperation is also incredibly, incredibly promising, but it's uh, building on the very strong foundation uh, between our countries where we have the same priorities, whether it's um, uh, economic development, uh, whether it's dealing with, uh, with climate change, uh, with, uh, with food security, of course upholding uh, international law. Uh, I, I, I hope that uh, uh, all these efforts you are making are met with some success because it is a it is of great importance to us, as you well know. As we have said, as, as we have this spoken about before, uh, these things are somehow toned down. I, I can't see how you're going to do it. But, uh, I, I hope that uh, uh, some some easing of tensions on these will be will be we will see in the, in the near future. Of course, the Beijing government protested this as it always does. The United States is not a party to the South China Sea issue and has no right to interfere in the sea-related issue between China and the Philippines. The military cooperation between the U.S. and the Philippines should not undermine China's sovereignty and maritime rights and interests in the South China Sea, nor should it endorse the illegal claims of the Philippines. China will continue to take necessary measures to firmly safeguard its territorial sovereignty and maritime rights and interests, and safeguard peace and stability in the South China Sea. As the future unfolds, this maritime neighbor of China is becoming increasingly assertive.
He may well be planning something like this. One day when she wakes up in the morning and realizes that it's better not to go after the Philippines, then that's a good day for the Philippines. That's what the CCP should think when they see that the problem is getting too complicated.